are in the town of Vernon, Vermont. So I here we are. I think kids that age working. We're in Vernon, Vermont, and what are you seeing out there, Judy? I see kids doing old-fashioned haying. These kids must be eight years old. Those bales weigh a hundred pounds. They don't weigh that much. And then over here, there's a nice organic corn growing beneath the tower. And what's that tower? Isn't that where nuclear waste is stored? No, that's a. I think that's the. Uh, that's a signal yeah. for for low-flying planes and others to know. Don't hit this. This is where the nuclear power plant is. But it's right next to all these fields growing organic corn and children playing in the hay fields. And the school. And the background. The elementary school. Across the street from it is do not trespass signs. This is the plant behind those trees. The uh, directly across the street from a lot Yankee plant. plant. And yet they insist that there's no danger and there's nothing about nuclear energy in that hurricane. <coughs> I'm just going to take a picture here. Okay. Do you want to say something? Me, no. No, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. A little camera shy. You're cam are you camera no, shy? Just a little bit. You're the police chief of Vernon, Vermont, I aren't know. you? What can I say? I, I am. But and you've been ill, but you're better now? I'm great. Excellent. <laughs> Glad to hear that. So here we are, it's August 6, 2013, and the Shutting Down Affinity Group is standing in front of the Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Plant today. And this is an intentional day to be here, Marcia? It is intentional, because uh, today is the day that the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima in Japan and uh, destroyed it and opened Pandora's box and unleashed nuclear weapons and nuclear power onto the world, and we want it to end. Annika Corbett, you're here at Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Plant on this August 6, 2013. Uh, what brings you here today? I'm honoring the dead from Hiroshima, and I'm trying to impress on the workers of Vermont Yankee that what they are doing is not good for the planet. Your sign says, so reads. So, Rick, you're here today. What has brought you here today? What happened in Hiroshima must not happen again. It has happened in Fukushima, Chernobyl. Island, but we're trying to help another the dead of Hiroshima. This is the Shut It Down Affinity Group in front of Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Plant from Vermont, August 6, 2013. I to say what brought you here with, you're part of the affinity group, the Shut It Down affinity group. Yes, and today I am in particular remembrance of Hiroshima. My father helped to make the bomb as part of the Manhattan Project specializing in plutonium. This is a huge burden. strong group of women hoping to shut down this nuclear plant, other nuclear plants that generate fuel for more nuclear
nuclear bombs and that are the result of faulty thinking that we can have peaceful atomic energy. No atomic energy is peaceful because it's dangerous to the lives of all of us. That's why I'm here. Ellen. Ellen Graves is here. What's brought you here today, Ellen? Well, today is a Tuesday, and on every day, every Tuesday, I fast to bring attention to the people in Guantanamo, the men in Guantanamo. And in that, to the horrendous things that the United States government has done. And then on this day, I remember that they went back with the people in Japan who were killed by the bombs. And to think about the woman who came and spoke to us as she had been a survivor of that many years ago. Now she talked about the flesh being burned off of her. Um, and all those things that we have done and said, it's okay. And here we are standing in front of the nuclear power plant where again the nuclear part is so horrible. It can destroy so much. And even if there was an accident now and the rods broke, um, even where I live, which is not that close, but it's within a 50 mile radius, and there would be anything alive, and nothing but the earth would be dead. And I stand here today thinking about all those things. Um, and how just one step to close this, close all the power plants, is one step towards humanity and keeping our world alive. Here we are, that's the sign saying Vermont Yankee Entergy. Welcome. Mm -hmm. So Hattie Nessel, you're mm -hmm. here with the Shut It Down Affinity Group. Sure am. <laughs> what's, what's brought you here today? Well, you know, we have a really solid group of women who really care about shutting this place down. And we all decided it would be very appropriate to come here on Hiroshima Day and bring the connection between nuclear weapons and nuclear power because it's an inextricable link. And both are weapons of mass destruction, for sure, indiscriminate weapons of mass destruction, and they're uh, violations of human rights. Because just as we stand here and speak, radiation is coming up into the air, it's coming up in the vapor from the uh, cooling towers, it's coming up uh, into the river, it's coming into the soil where they leak the tritium underneath the reactor, miles and miles of pipes under there leaking. Um, and then uh, they lie about safety all the time. So the most recent lies are quite uh, spectacular about radiation monitors that went off next to the reactor. And they said, well, the radiation monitors were uh, uh, faulty, but that there wasn't any problem because they just replaced them. But they were just uh, uh, um, given us a uh, supposedly in-depth uh, uh, examination by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and they, um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission didn't find any problem. So. I'll bet you that I am the only one here in this group that has ever been in Hiroshima. I hope you're okay. Oh, yes, I'm fine. Oh. The name is Marley Stevens, Hinsdale. <laughs> Thank you. I went from one end of Japan to the other. I also saw Nagasaki. <coughs> Very bad. God bless everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Phew, it's exhaust. So, how do you... So, so anyway, we, we have a really a, a very serious violation of human rights here. And the, I was talking about the monitors that went off. And the interesting thing about these monitors that went off, there are four or five, was it, occasions when they've gone off since June, and um, they didn't tell anybody. Entergy didn't notify the state, they didn't notify the NRC, and if they did notify the NRC, the NRC didn't notify the state. And um, one of the, uh, the Department of Public Service, uh, the head of that department said, we need 100% reliability. What is this about? Radiation monitors are going off. And um, 
and then you tell us, but there's no radiation, and that then they're not faulty monitors. Um, those monitors are supposed to be uh, accurate, 100% accurate, so that we know if there's a leak and it's for real. And um, if, if it's not, then that should be reported to the Department of Public Service in the state and explain why those monitors are going off if there's no leakage of radiation. Is that true? We don't even know if that's true. So, um, and the thing about uh, that people are very angry about within the state of Vermont is that there were uh, hearings by the Public Service Board after those monitors went off and Entergy never said a word. And that should have been part of that hearing. And then there was a VSNAP meeting that some of us went to. VSNAP is? It's Vermont Safety Nuclear Advisory Panel, which is called by the uh, chair of the Department of Public Service. And it includes a senator, it includes a geologist, it includes a public citizen, the Wyndham Regional Commission. Um, and um, uh, they, uh, the nuclear engineer, oldest families, etc. And so there's, there's supposed to be oversight uh, uh, and representing the public, the public Department of Public Service, and they don't know that these monitors have gone off. Not a word. And Oldest Vanning apparently was down here Wednesday and found out that these monitors have been going off. And um, and the spokesman Rob Williams says, "Well, there's no problem. Well, there is a problem, <laughs> you know. And the problem was sufficient enough to replace the monitors, but not let anybody know that monitors were failing. I mean, this is just uh, real." Kettle of worms down here, and, um, and it needs to be shut down. You're here on August 6th. What brings you here with this shut it down affinity group today? Um, I think it's a little different than the u usual coming here. Um, I was a little girl when the war appears. I remember my father's family are Quakers, and so it was always ingrained in me throughout my life uh, about peace. And you know, I have had five children, and I think of all children as mine. And I just feel it's important that we not forget. What happened 68 years ago, um, and in all that time, something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. I don't know. Hattie just said everything, I guess, other than this is very personal. It's my father's. He died on this day, and. And Lance, you're here with our affinity group, the Shut It Down Affinity Group. And I just could not be here on this day, on this anniversary. And I feel this is a perfect time to connect those dots between nuclear bombs and nuclear and to try to bring awareness to the fact that it all kills. It kills and it goes on killing for thousands of years after the fact to the bombs are obvious, but the meltdowns and the accidents and the three mile harbors and the whatever and the killing of the soil and the animals and the water. It's craziness. We must stop it. We must shut it down. before five and
Charted Down Affinity Group is walking from across the street onto the Vermont Yankee property to bring their message to the gate. down affinity group has actually shut down the nuclear power plant the women standing with their banners in front of the gates have stopped three cars and a couple of motorcycles from entering the Vermont Yankee nuclear facility and motorcycles are arriving, but the plant is still being kept closed. It is shut down by the Shut It Down Affinity Group. number of personnel trying to get onto the base, onto the uh, plant is, uh, is growing. There are no police in sight. It's been a few minutes since they've walked down. The Shut It Down Affinity Group has effectively shut down the Vermont Yankee Energy Plant. Now the Vermont, the Vernon Vermont police are on the scene and we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, the 
line of cars trying to come into Vermont Yankee is growing. They are backed up all the way to the highway. People have been arrested and are being taken to the police car. Into the police car. Traffic is now backed up onto the highway outside the plant itself. The first group has been taken away, but there have been there are enough protesters holding up the banner that the gate is effectively closed. So Vermont Yankee has been shut down. 20 minutes now. They've shut it down for 20 minutes. And it isn't over yet. And it's not over yet, and more cars are waiting. There must be 25. I wonder if they're losing some pay. Uh. The same police officer has arrived at the scene to pick up the second group of arrestees. The gate of the Vermont Yankee nuclear facility has been shut down for almost half an hour by now. Uh, cars are coming out of the facility, but cars are not able to get in because the women of the shut it down Affinity Group have effectively blocked it. The cars are coming out. <laughs> the protesters have been put into the police car. But still, and just now, are the vehicles carrying workers entering the Vermont Yankee nuclear power plant.
shut down by the Shut It Down Affinity Group on August 6, 2013. taken to the police station in Vernon, Vermont. They're finally getting into their shift, driving the workers in. The plant was effectively shut down to the vehicles trying to enter for approximately 30 to 35 minutes. shut down by the Shut It Down Affinity Group on this sixth day of August, 2013. The Shut It Down Affinity Group effectively shut it down. Okay, so so you shut down the plant for we over did. 30 minutes. We great. Um, yeah. How many cars? There were about 40 oh, cars. Wow. Backed up. So backed up. Plus Both sides of the road. Yeah. Plus 97. the ones coming out. Oh. Uh, I caught a 97 before we went over. We interfered. We interfered. We interfered. Which is Mr. Herschel. Herschel one of the special. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually, we shut it down. We the did. The Shut It Down Affinity Group shut it down. All right. right. Yeah. For 30 but minutes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time we an hour. And we invite others to do the same. Yes. We do. And the important right. thing is the Vermont the Vernon Police Station had only one police person on duty. Yes. Right. With this nuclear power plant. But, you know, it's it's a good budgetary thing because if there is an accident, there is nothing they can do right. to save anybody. Right. Any last words or thoughts, anyone? It was a beautiful day. <laughs> yep. It it's felt really day. good. It felt good. I think we're all feeling good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And a beautiful valley. This place should be reserved for growing food and generating solar power. I want the uh, oh, cows power. here to be healthy. Yeah. They're organic. Sixty-eight years ago today, I heard the news of what we had done in Japan. I was horrified, absolutely overcome. And so I went out walking the streets of New Orleans trying to find a solution how other people felt. I wanted to know I was alone. And I ended up in a used bookstore and talked to a wonderful man who said, when you start by reading Tolstoy, maybe you'll begin to understand nonviolence as the only solution to war. And that was the beginning of my journey. And here, 68 years later? 68 years later. I stood at Vermont Yankee today thinking, you know, in a moment there could be an accident. And first there would be the fire store, over a hundred fuel rods sitting up there on the banks of the Connecticut River to constantly be cooled with water from the Connecticut River. And if there was a shutdown and the, the backup, they don't have a backup generator yet. If there is no backup generator, then those fuel rods might, might catch fire like in Fukushima. And then a serious fire would be like, first there is the fire storm, then there is the wind storm. And 
then there is the heavy rain, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop it or to survive. So that's what we're facing. Uh, Hiroshima, there were some who were in the center area. They were buried under piles and piles of books or piles and piles of cotton blankets. They managed to survive, but they were able to get out and try to help people. But it, you know, it was sometime later that they sick from the radiation that they encountered as they got out of the area so that no one really escaped. There's no safe place to go when you're in that area. And that's true for people in New England, downwind, and the eastern seacoast of the United States.